What's going on, everyone? So the Brooklyn Nets have not had the showing this season that many believe that they would, right? On paper, they might be the best team in the entire league, and yet they are 2-5 and five on the season and just look in total disarray. Uh, Kyrie Irving's already having drama with the Nets. Josiah's even came out publicly and talked about it. We know Kevin Durant. He wanted to be out. He wanted to be traded. Uh, Kyrie Irving... There were all the talks of him going to the Lakers, and this is, seems kind of like their last go around uh, before things really start getting shaken up, before things end up uh, just kind of falling apart, right? I mean, Kyrie uh, still could just walk and leave the Brooklyn Nets after this season, and they wouldn't have any cap space or any way to kind of replace him. Kevin Durant could very likely want out again, and they need to figure out a solution to try to turn things around. And usually... The coach is the first one to go. Uh, Kevin Durant even wanted uh, Sean Marks, the GM, and Steve Nash, the coach, fired. Uh, Those were reports that came out, but that was kind of the ultimatum that Joe Sy gave him. And Kevin Durant didn't get either of them until now. So we got a report that Nets have fired Steve Nash. Uh, The Nets fired Steve Nash, source tells ESPN. Uh, It's being reported that it was like mutually agreed upon, but Steve Nash was fired. And this isn't really a big surprise, especially this season. Steve Nash is just, he's not making the adjustments. He's not, he's not showing that he is capable of coaching at least a team like this. Uh, Many people feel like he never really got a fair shake to begin with, which I do kind of understand, right? I mean, this whole thing was like a chaotic mess from the get-go, from day one. Um, And it's just, it's amazing too. To this day, it blows me away of like, what would have happened if Kevin Durant didn't have that toe on the line because it would have changed everything because they would have beaten Atlanta and I think that they would have beaten the Phoenix Suns and therefore they probably would have won a championship. Steve Nash would be a championship level head coach. Like would the conversation still be the same? But regardless, this team since been put together has won one playoff series. They have one playoff series win. Not like made it to the Eastern Conference, made it to the finals, multiple, you know, uh, you know, whatever, second, third round exits. No, I mean, they've won one playoff series since this team has been put together with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant and guys like James Harden, now Ben Simmons. I mean, so much talent has been came in and out of the roster, but it's been such a chaotic mess. So I do kind of understand Steve Nash not really getting a fair shake, but there was questions about him being hired from the get-go, right? He didn't get the job because people thought he was the next great, brilliant head coach and he just couldn't succeed. No, it was like he's friends with Sean Marks and like Joe Sy and, you know, Steve Nash is their guy, so they're kind of just bringing him in uh, to give him a shot. It was kind of more of like a favor, like you're our friend rather than like we think you're most qualified. It also didn't help that you had guys, you know, like Kyrie and stuff. They were like, we don't need a coach. Like, so, I mean, it just, it seemed from the jump, like how much are they going to listen to these guys? How much do they respect these guys? Steve Nash was also hired because of his relationship with Kevin Durant, but it's, it's one of those things like they wanted other people. Uh, They had, you know, a qualified head coach that they got rid of. And now the question is like, who's going to take on the mantle? Who's going to take the place of Steve Nash? Who would want this job? is the other thing too. Like what coach is going to want to come in and try to turn this around knowing that like it's already a mess in disarray. They're going to be the ones that are going to be the scapegoats and get all the blame. Kyrie Irving could probably leave and now you're in a rebuild situation. Like what, what, first off, what great coach is out there? And two, like what coach would want to do this? You know, like, what coach is going to be like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Maybe you could go get, like, Quinn Snyder. You know, but even then, like, he underperformed and underachieved with the Utah Jazz in many people's eyes. Many people thought he wasn't the right coach for that. Uh, He wasn't good at, like, maintaining egos and stars in the locker room, right? I mean, you had the whole Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert situation. How is that going to look, you know, when you have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving? Uh, the, The organization itself has just given those two so much, you know, just leeway and just power that it's kind of blown up in their face in many ways so I I just I don't know how you establish a new culture have a coach come in you know seven games into the season it's just I don't know I don't I mean look it doesn't hurt you know it's not like Steve Nash is such a great coach that like firing him was like stupid it's like what are you doing like no I mean it doesn't hurt at all but I don't think it matters (laughs) I don't think it's like it's one of those things where it's like it's a it's a coaching problem solely. And it's like if you replace the coach, that's it. All your problems are fixed. You get the right guy in there. All your problems are fixed. I think it's, you know, from top to bottom, just an issue. 
Um, I just think, you know, Steve Nash getting ejected. He, he's kind of, you kind of see he's starting to get a little irritated, a little hot. Um, I think he was feeling the pressure too. He came into this season knowing that like his entire team wants him fired, that, you know, Kevin Durant wants him gone. There were even talks about Kyrie wanting him gone, although Kyrie was based, he didn't say he didn't want him fired. He just was like, no, like, you know, hey, I love everybody type thing. Like it was kind of like a, I'm not going to answer the question. I'm going to kind of duck around it. <laughs> so, I mean, he knew the writing was on the wall. And then especially with the, a, you start two and five, you know, you were one and four. Um, it's just it, or one in five at one point. It's one of those things where it's like, you knew it was coming. You knew that it was just a matter of time. And also the coach is always the first to go, right? The coach is always the first one that you, that you unload because it's the easiest. You get, you kind of, it gives you an opportunity to kind of make an adjustment. But I just, I don't know what coach is going to be out there that's going to be able to save the day. I don't know. I, again, I don't think Steve Nash was the sole problem. You know, I think he was one of many problems. I think he was one of, you know, several problems that the Brooklyn Nets are having. I think he was, I, I again, I don't think it hurts, but I don't, I, I don't think like this is the move that's going to turn everything around. It's like, oh man, this is it. This is the time. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for to see them really turn it around. I just, I don't think that that's what this is. And I don't know what coach out there is going to come in and save the day. I don't know what coach would want this position. I don't know what coach would actually, you know, be able to turn around this position. And that was kind of the point. It's like, okay, if they fire Steve Nash, well then who, like who replaces him? Who are you going to get that's going to save the day? Like I said, maybe Quinn Snyder, maybe you can give him a go, but I don't think he's going to be able to get that done. And I don't even know if he would want this headache because that's what this is. This is a headache and it could only get worse. You know, like if they don't, like... I don't think it's a, co I think it's a talent problem, you know, like, which sounds crazy because you have a team of Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, but nobody else is really doing anything. Like Ben Simmons might as well not even be out there. He's getting, he's fouling out every other game. Like, you know, they, they guys aren't knocking down shots. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant are putting up, you know, 75 points a game and it's not enough. Uh, they can't play defense and stop anybody. So teams are just scoring like, like it's like nobody's even there. Like, it's just, it's a mess from top to bottom. And I don't think these guys have the personnel to all of a sudden turn it around and be a great defense. You know, I just, I don't see that being a, a scenario. So then they got to be able to outscore people. So maybe coaching, you can put the proper, like, you know, offensive schemes in to maybe be more efficient scoring wise. But it's a lot of iso ball regardless, right? It's Kyrie, KD, Kyrie, KD, you go, I go, you go, I go. And that's not going to save anything. And I don't think that they're just going to say, okay, it's fine. Let's just be done with this. You know, let's just move on after this. You know, like I just, I don't think that there's a, a solution. Um, also real quick, uh, while I was recording this video, uh, Steve Nash released a statement. So I wanted to read the statement real quick. Steve Nash says, thank you, Brooklyn. Uh, a very heartfelt thanks to Joe and uh, Clara Sai, uh, along with Sean Marks for giving me the opportunity to coach the Brooklyn Nets. It was an amazing experience for many, and with many challenges that I'm incredibly grateful for. It was a pleasure to work with the players, performance team, and front office every day. I'm especially grateful uh, to my coaching staff and video room, who are a talented group with much character and professionalism. Lastly, thanks uh, to Brooklyn and the passionate fans who support this team, family first, and my family has found a home here and loves being a part of this beautiful community. I wish the Nets all of the success in the world and the Nashes uh, will be rooting for our team as they turn this season around. So again, a nice little, you know, heartfelt like, hey, like I, uh, you know, I, I thank you. I appreciate you. But I don't honestly, I don't think Steve Nash is uh, is upset about the situation. I'm sure he wanted to get out. I mean, this seems like it was a sinking ship. That uh, that it was time to just get out of, and he was finally able to get out of it, you know. Um, so right now you got uh, Jacu Vaughn. He's going to be the uh, the uh, interim head coach. I don't know. I again, I just I don't think that uh, this is a solution that can be solved. I don't think Steve Nash regrets leaving. I'm sure he he was jumping for joy at the opportunity to get out of here. I don't see a coach, uh, at least a, a prestigious coach. It's at least this coach that knows. Like, how to turn this around? I don't see them wanting to come in, and and just dealing with this headache. It's just it's a mess, you know. And if it doesn't work, you're the bad guy. Not only are you the bad guy, but then you know if you guys aren't winning, 
Kyrie's probably leaving, so now you got no Kyrie Irving. Kevin Durant probably wants to be traded, so now you got a new Kevin Durant. I think I think if you're a real coach, I think if you're a real head coach, you're waiting for that. Like, because, like, say I'm Quinn Schneider. I would rather wait, let the Nets implode. You're going to end up doing a deal, like, for, the, the Nets are going to end up trading Kyrie because they're not going to want to lose him for nothing. So you're going to get something back for Kyrie. And then you're going to end up trading Kevin Durant, and then you're going to get a bunch of pieces for Kevin Durant, and you've probably got a new young team that's probably better and more competitive than this team is right now. And you, as a new coach, you come in, and you can kind of now establish your culture from the beginning instead of dealing with a bunch of egos. Like, that's what I would want to do if I was one of these, like, coach. Like, if I was Quinn Snyder... I'd be like, man, I'd rather wait for the for Kevin Durant to be traded to the Celtics, go get me Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, have the have the Nets trade Kyrie to the Lakers, and maybe they can get like a Miles Turner or something. And now I got, you know, Miles Turner, Ben Simmons, Jalen Brown, uh, Marcus Smart, and Seth Curry. That's a better overall. Now I can establish defensive roots. I can establish an offensive system. I can establish identity on both sides of the ball. Like I just think that that would be a better opportunity if you're a head coach coming in. But I don't know. This is a mess regardless. Love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Let me know down in the comment section below.